Hello everyone, and welcome back to Arcade Spirits. I've gathered myself, and a part of me regrets not choosing the bottom answer. But I'm a decent person, so we'll live with my choices. <clears throat> anyway. Um, thanks. No problem, we've gamers got to stick together. I'm Queen Bee, by the way. Agro style FOD lane pusher specialist for L7 Gaming. Rad. I figured that when you put your arms over your head, cheered and shouted, no one can defeat me, Queen Bee. Hey, I do not sound like that. <laughs> well, maybe a little. <laughs> anyway, I'm one of the regulars around here, besides Purper and Tio. So you'll be seeing a lot of me in the future. Let's hope you last longer than the last guy. Oh, great, now she's even making my job into a competition. I hope there isn't a betting pool, too. You look like a smart kid. You've seen one of my many, many streams on the internet, right? No. I literally have no idea what you're talking about. Whoa. Really? I've been living under a rock for the past decade? If you consider a small yet formidable apartment a rock, then yes. Oh, you sweet child. Please stop calling me a child. I am into you. Oh my god. <laughs> you are so innocent and pure. Come, let me show you the path to darkness that is the internet. <sighs> Let's play into the sweet and innocent a little. Well, it's a part of my job to know all about the games here. <laughs> And if Queen Bee is going to give me some insight on the culture around this game, I should take advantage of that. <laughs> that is not okay! into the dark abyss my mi <laughs> my mistress <laughs> fuck no i can do it i can do it mm, let's get sexy mm. lead me further into the dark abyss my mistress yeah oh she was into that <laughs> fuck me queen b grabs my arm and pulls me closer to the fist of discomfort cabinet and upon further inspection, I see the whole haphazard pile of tech she's rigged up. You can't just plug one of these caps into the internet, so I use a number of clip-on webcams and mics and stuff. That webcam there broadcasts my own personal PC back home, which then the stream matches live to all my fans. The chat room appears on my phone. It costs a bit to put everything all together, and it takes like half an hour to rig up and test each morning, but after doing this here for a couple years, it's easy peasy. Aside from Naomi grinding her teeth at my clip-on cameras, damaging the paint job, I mean. Anyway, I prefer to stream from the funplex than from home. There is so much to miss on sitting by your lonesome with the console version of FOD. The crowds, the wicked trash talk, the community. Uh, wait, are you broadcasting live right now? Are we live right now? Nope, no way. <sighs> Thank God. What a nightmare to say... Lead me to the dark abyss, my mistress, in front of thousands of people. Luckily, there'll probably only be two here. <laughs> Fuck no, that was part of my warm-up matches. I've got a pretty big tournament coming up, so I try to get as much practice in as possible. Even if it is with a bunch of fodder. As in, FOD-der. As in, you know, chum. 
Lunch meat, scrubs, losers. Thank you. I got the idea, yes. Queen Bee sees something out of the corner of her eye and glances around to the arcade floor. She gives a nod to someone hanging near the Street Fighter cabinet. Ah, my crew is starting to trickle in. We should be starting team practice soon. Wait, what time is it? And the tone, the time will be 2.25 p.m. Eastern. Beep, beep. Heart. What the? I've got to go live in five minutes. Listen, kid, it's been swell. We'll chat later, right? Sure. Uh, one thing, can you keep swearing down at least a little? We've got kids around here, and I don't want you to get in trouble with Gavin. <laughs> Him? <laughs> but for you, I'll keep it to a PG-13 rating. Now, if you'll excuse me, there are some butts out there that I need to kick. Later. Bye. I can't get her voice down, so I'm just gonna do my, like, uh, posh dummy voice. No, that's not that. It's more mellow, but whatever. <clears throat> and with a wave and a twirl, she completely abandons me and returns to her fist of discomfort game. Queen Bee fires up her broadcast rig, and the shouting, and milder, swearing starts up again. I should probably get out of here before I accidentally end up on the stream. Passion seems to run deep in this arcade. Everybody's spirit burning with passion for, well, various things, but hey, passion's passion. She seems to like me, which will make my job easier in the long run. There's a huge FOD community in this arcade, despite being a tiny strip mill joint, as you know. Let's see, what to handle next? The last thing! In the distance, I see a number of people gathering, which is surprising since the first half of my shift was complete and utter solitude. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to see that people do come to the arcade, but it's quite the crowd that's assembling. Like, larger than Queen Bee's team was. Rowdier, too. This has got to be against some fire code or safety protocol or something, right? Speaking as a citizen that enjoys living, having an escape route in case of emergency is necessary. Time to clear the way and pave my own path of safety. Oh my god. As I approach, I see flashing neon lights accompanied by upbeat Europop drifts. It's an auditory flashback right to 1980X. I can't help but nod my head to the beat. A pulsating mass of people have surrounded Showtime stage, cheering on the current player. The game itself takes up a whole corner of the arcade, requiring a fair amount of space to actually play. <clears throat> Showtime Stage is an ultra-modern arcade smash hit. It uses motion tracking sensors hidden behind the colored spotlights to check dance pose accuracy and score your sweet moves. It's pure dance fever. Can you catch the fever, Coda? I've had my dance fever shots at the doctor's office earlier this season. So witty. Anyway. As the dance ends, one of the players hops down from the stage and immediately starts talking to a young man leaning up against the back wall. Mm. Okay, how do I voice voice them? Did you see that, Tio? I got my first double A on Stop the Beat. Hell yeah! Yeah, I did. You're doing great. Remember last month, you couldn't even pass that song. Totes impressive. I'm gonna keep practicing, and one day, maybe even surpass you. Hey, I hope you do. And when you do, you can be the one who brings in new dancers and teaches them how to play. As the next song starts, my eyes shift from their conversation to observe the gyrations and intricate limb movements coming from the showtime stage. I feel my head bobbing and foot tapping. Hey, it's a really catchy song. Can you blame me? I'm getting really into it when I feel a hand on my shoulder. Care to dance? Excuse me? Um, how about you? Wanna take the spotlight? Um, let's be on good terms with everyone. Back when I was stomping around on the dance mat games as a kid, they had arrows. I'm not sure I'd even know how to play this one, but it has caught my curiosity. From the previous observed conversation, this guy seems to know the ins and outs of this weird dancing game, and is keen to teach. Before I commit to getting down with my bad self, I think I should know a little more about exactly with what that entails. Plus, I'm used to playing these games solo. There's a chance of stomping on someone else's foot that way. It is a valid point. However, how could I resist asking a gal such as yourself? Come my eye the moment you walked over. Hey, wait. 
You're new here, right? Yes, very. Name's Mateo, but everyone here just calls me Teo. Hi, Teo. Uh, Teo's the best, greatest guy here. He's sort of like our leader, yeah. Oh, please, I'm nothing, really. He looks directly into my eyes. Nothing as special as you. Whoa, you're coming on me, dude. I think my heart belongs to Hot Queen Bee over there. I don't know. I just like to show newbies the ropes and teach them how to play. Our community is small, but we're all super close. This guy wants to get into my fence. I think he'd be a perfect addition to our gang. I work here. So, what do you say? Play our silly dancing game. Do I have to wear obnoxiously bright colors and 80s patterns? <clears throat> Teo stretches his arm to me, waiting for my hand to grab his. Let's make friends, go for it. I couldn't care less that I'm supposed to be working. As a kid, I remember stomping around on dance mats. Dance mats? Why not try out 28 sexes, hottest dance game? Even if I technically don't know how to play it yet. Without thought, I take his hand. Let's do this. So I'm about to step up to the stage, and all of a shiver crawls down my spine. I glance over and spot Ashley standing behind the ticket counter. I know I can't see her face behind the mask, but I can totally sense she's glaring daggers my way. It's creeping me out. Oh, on second thought, I'm actually supposed to be working right now. I'm the new floor attendant, Coda. Really? But I haven't seen you around here at all. What happened to the other guy? He was actually pretty good at Showtime stage, now that I think about it. He's, he's out. I'm in. He's currently year, it's currently year zero, floor attendant Coda regime. Hello there. Well, it's an honor to meet you, Coda. I hope we get to know each other well. Indeed. For someone that loves Showtime stage as much as you do, I haven't actually seen you play yet. True, most of the time during these meetups, I tend to let everyone else play. I go around and make sure everyone is happy and having a blast. But what about you and your feelings? Tao so shrugs. Uh... My happiness comes from making other people happy. That's all I need in life. Um... Oh my god, what if he can't dance? That would suck. <laughs> Which is all well and good, but I still need to deal with this crowd. How best to handle it? Oh, fuck. Okay. We need to seriously talk about crowd sizes. Crowd sizes. I know you're having a ball over here, but this crowd is blocking the emergency exit. By law, we have to keep the path present. Can't you let it slide just this once? Mm -hmm. For me? Nope. If I let it happen once, then it's gonna happen all the time. I get it, though. Your crew's passionate about this game. That's a good thing. But a stampede on my first day at work would be bad for everyone involved. Could you imagine the headlines? Local arcades, floor attendant, trampled on first day, blood everywhere. <laughs> Very true. I don't want to be checking my social media tomorrow and click the link to your obituary. We totes can't have that. Totes! I got this. Luckily, the song that was being played just finished. Teo jumps up on the stage and cups his hands over his mouth. Hey, listen! We need to keep the area to the left of the stage clear. Aw, oh, man, why? I like my spot. Hey now, you know the deal. We all have to be cool about fire safety. It's Coda's first day, so let's show her some respect. I see everyone turn around and glare at me. Great, I'm gonna be known as the party pooper. I guess I have had worse reputations in my lifetime. Like that one time I had to close the pool because of that dirty bandage flowing in the water. No one would talk to me for like a week. Oh, you can just get rid of that. Okay. Hey, hey, just don't disappoint me, crew. Coda's just doing her job. Reluctantly, the crowd reshuffles itself into a semi-orderly fashion. As everyone settles into a safer way of watching the game, Teo jumps down and comes back to me. Better? I nod, genuinely impressed with how Teo can capture his community's attention. They listen to him and have the utmost respect for him. Yeah, actually, much better. Didn't mean to cause any trouble. Sometimes we just get so caught up in the game, you know? Of course you know. Hey, you should still join us later. Maybe when your shift's over. We'll all be here dancing until closing time. As long as that dancing's within the law, carry on. Officer Coda has spoken. I start to walk away, ready for my next venture, when I remember something I should do. I turn back to Teo. Hey, thanks. No problem. 
Well, I feel nice and accomplished. I was able to uphold the safety of the arcade and make a new friend. I said that's pretty good for my first day. Even Gavin's gonna be impressed, right? With that business sorted out, it's time to leave Showtime stage. The arcade is now at peace. My work here is done. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's wrong button. Well, actually, we're a few hours from closing time, so my work here isn't quite done, but you know. Can I? I didn't piss, okay, I didn't piss her off too much. Okay, cool. Okay, so she doesn't fully like me yet, but we'll get there. Some people are just a little, a little they've got layers. Gotta get work for it. I'm so at peace, in fact, I didn't even notice the underboss of the arcade sliding on up behind Good me. Day. Hmm, not a bad day, first day so far. I've been keeping tabs on you. Well, others have been, they've been texting me. You know, you should consider getting a proper group chat app going. I've got a crappy phone plan, my texts aren't great. A valid point, I'll look into that. Impressive. I'm impressed with how you handle yourself. I think you're gonna work out just fine. Anyway, I've prepared your paperwork. If you'd like to go sign it and make this working relationship a bit more above board. Yeah! So you're staying? Please tell me you're staying. I mean, I fed you and everything. Francine hasn't fired her yet, right? An adorable nightmare joins the impromptu staff gathering. Ooh. Code is off to a great start. Here's your first day, followed by many more. Don't you two have jobs to attend to? I just ordered a replacement power supply for Robotron. Nothing left to do for the day. Not many kids around for me to entertain. Finally, a quiet moment. My dream job has been going a mile a minute since I got here. Huh. Is it my dream job? I told Francine I was looking for hope. I've been so used to life dumping all over me that I've come to expect the worst, generally. And yet, I can't say the funplex has dumped on me. It's been hectic at times, a little too much, but not really in a bad way. I'm starting to get along with my coworkers. I'm helping people with their problems. Maybe I'm finding the hope I was looking for after all. We've only got a few hours until closing. It's nice and quiet. How about we game a bit? Speak for yourself. I've still got paperwork to handle. Oh, come on. Don't act like you don't game. Uh... Irrelevant. I know your dirty little secret. What, Naomi? You sneak in early each morning to play pinball. You're a pinball wizard. Ah, uh, well, what of it? I bring order to chaos. Pinball is the very expression of that art form. You know what we should do? Impromptu pinball tourney. The girls are giggling, and I'm finding myself smiling right alongside them. All in all, not a bad way to end my first day. Do I get to play pinball? Pinball. By the way, I booked a birthday party for this afternoon. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Francine! Uh, what? Oh no. The looks of confusion and outright terror on their faces, all laughter dying off immediately, are vaguely concerned to me. What is this music? Sorry, sorry, I meant to tell you, dears, but I plum forgot. This is fucking Bald Mountain? What the fuck? A, a birthday party. How old are the kids, may I ask? It's her fifth birthday. Oh, to be young again. <laughs> Five-year-olds? Naomi starts pulling at her hair, eyes wide and trembling, throwing ski balls over hand under the glass, jumping up and down with pinball machines, putting chewing gum into coin slots, pulling out my costume, tearing pieces off of it. Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. I survived kids' birthdays parties before. Doom. Doom, the end is nigh. I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. Yep. It's time for my afternoon nap anyway. Francine, you bitch! Fun, dears. Her scare face is cute. <laughs> That's so neat. Right, battle stations, everyone. I'll take ticket desk so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids. Naomi, watch for hardware damage. Coda, roaming duty. Look for trouble. Do what you can. Prepare yourselves. They are coming. <laughs> Like an oncoming tidal wave, the rumble is felt before it is seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot, minivans disgorging kindergartners, and suddenly... Oh no! An explosion of small humans rushes the doors, bursting into the arcade before scattering every which way. 
even before any of them can get tokens, they're grabbing a joystick, smashing buttons, eager to get their game on, or just even pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations, Naomi, by the fragile pinball machines, Ashley near the door, trying to distract the incoming kids to greet them. Gavin, armed with pre-stacked $10 rolls of tokens, quickly exchanges them with the adults, Beats waiting in line at the change machines, or Beats waiting in line at the change machines. As for the pro gamers, well, Queen B and Teo's friends bolt for the exit, abandoning them, keen on getting out ahead of the surge of kitties, I guess. That's all very well and good, but I've got no idea where I'm supposed to be. Uh, okay. I keep hitting the wrong button. Roaming duty, Gavin said. Look for trouble, Gavin said. I mean, I was doing that before, but now the chaos has multiplied. For a few minutes, I'm like a pinball being bounced around, or that like a frog trying to cross a highway of traffic. Frogger, you know that game. Eventually, I spot three possible problems on the rise, and Coda, professional floor attendant, is ready to attend to them. Which one of these should I tackle first, though? I may not be able to deal with all of them in time. Oh, shit. Okay. 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 Um. <laughs> Angry adult shouting at kid first. That seems. This, then this, I think. Because they work there. So let's start with this, since there's no other people around. The sounds of hardship call to me from the Fast Car 5 racing games. Shouting adults and crying children are never particularly good shines, good signs, and I hope beyond hope that I can take this on. I shake the discomfort off. Now is not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on and stat. As I get closer to the revving of engines and clacking of shifting gears, I see a grown woman berate a cowering boy. I did it. Admit it, you know what you did, you brat. Oh god, it's a Karen. You manipulated my precious son to put his tokens in your game. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm so sorry. Children like you are the absolute worst garbage. Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout at a child, no less. What's going on here? This jerk of a boy told my sweetest beyond sweet Josh that he should put his own tokens into the racing machine so he could play it for free. Josh earned those tokens from his own allowance, and I won't let some devil child steal his money. Let's just take a moment to calm down, okay? Before I say anything else, I spot Queen Bee and Teo out of the corner of my eye. Queen Bee looks infuriated, and Teo has buried his face in his hand. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, they might have some insight. The racing games are right next to the Showtime stage. Teo probably had a good vantage point of the whole thing if he was dancing on stage. And just by the way, Queen Bee's browser for road, and else something's not sitting right with her. I could ask one of them for their help. I could try to solve this for myself. Um. Let's let's get some interactions with Queen B. I sense Queen B is consumed by rage. I bet she knows what's really gone going on here. Probably not, but whatever. I wave over. I wave her over to join us. I attempt to reach out for her for guidance. Ma'am, I know you're upset right now, but what I think that. The lady just is a fucking no piece of- no good piece of shit. Nope, not helping. Fuck! This is in fact the furthest away from helping I could ever envision. This kid runs away to, to a lot of people as I try my best to defuse the situation. I- that boy did nothing wrong. Nothing. Um, excuse me? Pardon. How dare you? There's no way I'm getting a word between these two. I sigh and resign myself to watching it play out. How dare I? How fucking dare you for yelling at that kid? I don't care. I feel bad for this. I feel bad for this Josh guy. I don't care if he did what you claim or not. You've got no right to traumatize him over it. He's a thief and he'll grow up to be a no good criminal. Fuck off. This still doesn't fucking matter. Do you honestly think that to like take a single fucking second of your life and really think that shouting at a child is an effective way to handle this? Uh, you can't tell me how I should act. Who do you think you are? Get the fuck out of my arcade! I am the nemesis of evildoers, writer of wrongs, the rising star of L7 Gaming. Queen B poses in her trademark pose. No one can defeat me, Queen B. 
I am the one and only Queen Bee. In the name of the Fun Flex, I'll punish you. Well, I've never, in all my years, you are far worse than an impudent child. Josh, we are leaving this horrible arcade right now. Fuck off. Well, that's one way to handle that. The woman scoops up her child and storms out the front door. I don't think we'll see her or her son anymore, and frankly, I'm okay with that. Once they're gone, Queen Bee turns her attention back to me. Come on! Ugh, people like that really piss me off. My blood's still boiling. Oh, hey. Thanks for the backup. Uh, you're welcome. I came to you for backup. You kind of handled it. I really didn't do much of anything. Yeah, well, I knew you had my back, kid. I can sense that you're like me. I can't stand to get see people get screamed at. It sucks, you know. Oh. Queen Bee's whole aura changed from her normal ups upbeat snark to being completely down in the dumps. This is a side of her I haven't seen yet. She just looks so sad. Are you doing okay? I know it's really none of my business, but I feel like I should ask about this. Looks like the incident hit her hard. Hey, everything all right? It's okay, you can tell me. She pauses for a second before her normal smile creeps back on her lips. Seriously, I'll be fine. I just don't like seeing adults treat kids like their future's nothing. Like they'll be worthless stains in society. Hmm. I wonder. Perhaps this is some buried trauma that we'll dig up later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but right now. I've had a lot of people tell me I could never be a professional gamer. I should quit daydreaming. And I say fuck those people. Don't let anyone tell you who you are. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it, kid. She really likes me! Does she like me better than anyone else? Yes! <laughs> okay, show's over. You should go check on that boy. The boy? Oh, I totally forgot. You're right. Hold on. I always am. Yes, you are! <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to try and squeeze in a few more matches before quitting time. Later. I'm out, kid. Bye. Queen Bee takes one more moment to triangulate the safest path back to Fist of Discomfort through a sea of children. After poking around for a bit, I imagined I managed to find the kid, still shaking up from the whole ordeal. Hey, it's, sorry about that. You gonna be okay? I think so. I swear I didn't do anything. The other kid just came out of nowhere and dropped his token into my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him, and he just ran away. And then that woman approached you and started yelling. The boy nods, wiping his snotty nose on his shirt. Uh-huh. Well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady's gone, and I don't think she's ever gonna come back. Especially after the way Queen Bee burned her. The boy, cheeks still streaked with tears, lets a smile spread on his face. You. And told the other lady thanks for sticking up for me too. I nod and the boy scurries off and rejoins some of his other friends. Alright, that's sorted out. The other two situations are about to scream, pin out of control. I only got time to do with one of them. Which one? Fuck. Um. Cupcakes are just gonna make a mess. That's okay. Right? Stolen tickets is actually like it's an urgent thing. I mean, this might end in tears. Fuck. Ashley, do your job. This one. Hopefully, that was an okay choice. I weave my way through the waves of children towards the skee ball machines. One little girl sitting at the end of a skee ball ramp, crying. No parents had to settle her, so the task falls to me. Guessing I should be more cautious about this sort of thing, with what lawsuit happy parents lurking over by the vending machines, ignoring their kids, but floor attendant Coda decided to take the case all the same. Hey, hey, my name's Coda, and I work here at the arcade. What's wrong? Can I help? Her sobbing pauses as she looks up at me. I lost my tickets. Someone stole them from me. I played and played and and won a bunch of them, but then I put them down and I was talking to a friend, and now they're gone. I glance around, but in a sea of kids, it's impossible to tell who the thief could be. I don't even have any more tokens to play with. I set up all my ski ball and my tickets are all gone now. 
Oh god. <laughs> easy, easy. We'll figure this out somehow. Although I've got no clue to where even to start, to be honest. Maybe there was a witness to the crime? Percy would have had a good view of, of the Redemption game area based on where the movie's positioned. Gavin has a ticket desk. Uh, Crow's nest for the whole arcade. Could have spotted something. Or I could just bend the rolls and solve this directly. No, let's talk to Gavin. Nope, not gonna rest around with this one. A theft is serious business. Wait right here, okay kid? I'll go get help. We'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. Okay. Duck through the crowd, waving my way back to the ticket desk. Hey, Gavin, that girl over there. Boy with the red hair, currently playing Frogger. He took her tickets when she wasn't looking. Wait, you saw? Certainly. Of course, what of it? Um... Um, this one or this one? He seems to like order, so let's do this. Okay, so how do we deal with this one? Do we confront the Brad's parents or go grab the cops or just work him under the hot lights? Um. Honestly, it's just letting it go. If you confront the child, he'll clam up and refuse to ever admit wrongdoing. And the parents can be twice as immature, I found. Right now, I just want to keep the peace. Won't go crying is less of a disturbance the boy throwing a tantrum. The way he stands there so stoic and uncaring while that girl in pink just sobs. It's not right. I mean, seriously, it's not right. But he's my boss. How hard do I want to push this? Uh... Have a heart? This he won't like. He won't like this either. Come on, Gavin. So you let one customer feel like crap just to avoid another customer maybe feel like crap? A thief, may I add? There's keeping the peace and then there's allowing suffering just because it's the path of least resistance. We're losing a customer today regardless. I'd rather not break a little girl's heart to do it and let a bully learn he can do what he wants. At first, it looks like he's going to chew me out for standing up to him, but... You think me a monster? I had intended. I, of course I feel bad about this. I feel bad for her, and he shouldn't get away with it. I'm just trying to protect the arcade as a whole. <sighs> then do it! Protect the arcade by protecting the gamers and their yeah. dreams. He sighs like a stress release valve, yawning, open and closed. Indeed. You're right, of course. Hell yeah. Wait, does he like me now? Oh my god, he likes me way more than anybody else! Alright. Apologies. Focusing on the big picture does tend to leave me apathetic to each individual brushstroke. My apologies, Coda. I'm lucky I had you to put me back on track. Your predecessor wouldn't have stood up to me like this and showed me how wrong I was. Now let's sort this out properly. Gavin walks right up to the kid who's busy hopping a frog around in traffic. Wouldn't mind seeing this kid go play in traffic myself. <laughs> Fuck them kids! <laughs> oh shit! Oh, he just got called boy. What do you want? Um... Can't help but notice that roll of tickets in your pocket. Big winner, are you? The biggest. Got him on playing uh, that spinny color game over there, see? Really? It's funny. I see. I own that game. Maybe. May I see your roll, please? I don't want to show you. Well, I can see the end poking out of your pocket there, and I can see the serial number on that ticket starts with a 1, which is interesting because I roll. I wrote it into the color spinner. It started with a 2. I think not. Meaning those tickets were won by playing skee ball, specifically by that girl over there, and you took them. You're a liar, leave me alone. I'd yell for my mom. Seriously? Do you really want to risk having your mom believe me instead of you? Instead, how about you give me the tickets and walk away? <sighs> At first, the kid looks like he's gonna shriek bloody murder, but then a few nervous glances at his mother, busy munching chips by the vending machine, changes his mind. Take him, I don't want him anyway. He angrily stomps away, presumably to go play some other game on the other side of the arcade. Yay! You did it! You found my tickets! The girl actually hugs me. Well, hugs my leg, anyway. Thank you! Thanks and thanks! Now then, let's get you your prize. What is it you wanted? Crayons! Those we have. Coda, I'll take it from here. 
Thank you. Oh, that's a fuzzy happy feeling right there. <laughs> but no time to rest in my laurels. I've got other arcade dreams to defend. Two problems in the can. Now to deal with that cupcake problem. Oh, fuck. <sighs> Too late. The vintage wood midway cabinet now I just finished fixing up. Uh, fixing up? It's covered in icing. Looks like Ashley's costume is going to need dry cleaning, too. I shoot them a hapless looking shrug. Fuck. Hey, Coda. Kinda wish it was pink icing. Then nobody would notice. <sighs> yeah, sorry about that. I wasn't quick enough. You still helped out. I saw you with those other kids. You're natural. I think wings are winding down anyway. Why not take a break? And then I'll swap off with you and take a break myself afterwards. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Honestly, I'm kind of worn out. Ashley's right. I need to step away from this craziness, if only for a few minutes. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to end it then. Um, we worked. Honestly, I'd work in an arcade. That shit seems fun. I have a dream of just opening a full, like, 80s arcade, only the old machines, it all's out of quarters. There's vending machines and like a snack bar, and that has super overpriced food to cover the costs of everything. <laughs> oh, fuck. But, uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.